the pioneering development of the scientific method by the Arab Ashari polymath Ibn al-Hazm, al hasan was an important contribution to the philosophy of science. In the Book of Optics, c. 1025 AD, his scientific method was very similar to the modern scientific method and consisted of the following procedures, observation, statement of problem, formulation of hypothesis, testing of hypothesis using experimentation, analysis of experimental results, interpretation of data and formulation of conclusion, publication of findings. In the model of the motions, Ibn al haytham also describes an early version of Occam's razor where he employs only minimal hypotheses regarding the properties that characterize astronomical motions, as he attempts to eliminate from his planetary model the cosmological hypotheses that cannot be observed from Earth. In his Aporias against Ptolemy, Ibn al haytham commented on the difficulty of attaining scientific knowledge, truth is sought for itself, but, the truths, he warns, are immersed in uncertainties, and the scientific authorities, such as Ptolemy, whom he greatly respected, are, not immune from error. He held that the criticism of existing theories, which dominated this book, holds a special place in the growth of scientific knowledge, therefore, the seeker after the truth is not one who studies the writings of the ancients and, following his natural disposition, puts his trust in them, but rather the one who suspects his faith in them and questions what he gathers from them the one who submits to argument and demonstration, and not to the sayings of a human being whose nature is fraught with all kinds of imperfection and deficiency. Thus the duty of the man who investigates the writings of scientists, if learning the truth is his goal, is to make himself an enemy of all that he reads, and, applying his mind to the core and margins of its content, attack it from every side. He should also suspect himself as he performs his critical examination of it, so that he may avoid falling into either prejudice or leniency. Ibn al haytham attributed his experimental scientific method and scientific skepticism to his Islamic faith. He believed that human beings are inherently flawed and that only God is perfect. He reasoned that to discover the truth about nature, it is necessary to eliminate human opinion and error and allow the universe to speak for itself. In the winding motion, Ibn al haytham further wrote that faith should only apply to prophets of Islam and not to any other authorities, in the following comparison between the Islamic prophetic tradition and the demonstrative sciences, from the statements made by the noble Sheikh, it is clear that he believes in Ptolemy's words in everything he says, without relying on a demonstration or calling on a proof, but by pure imitation, taklid that is how experts in the prophetic tradition have faith in prophets, may the blessing of God be upon them. But it is not the way that mathematicians have faith in specialists in the demonstrative sciences. Ibn al haytham described his search for truth and knowledge as a way of leading him closer to God. I constantly sought knowledge and truth, and it became my belief that for gaining access to the effulgence and closeness to God. There is no better way than that of searching for truth and knowledge. His contemporary Abu Rehan al-Biruni also introduced an early scientific method in nearly every field of inquiry he studied. For example, in his treatise on mineralogy, Qayt Ab al-Jamahir, Book of Precious Stones, he is the most exact of experimental scientists, while in the introduction to his study of India, he declares that to execute our project, it has not been possible to follow the geometric method and develops comparative sociology as a scientific method in the field. He was also responsible for introducing the experimental method into mechanics, the first to conduct elaborate experiments related to astronomical phenomena, and a pioneer of experimental psychology. Unlike his contemporary of Asana's scientific method where general and universal questions came first and led to experimental work. Al-Biruni developed scientific methods where universals came out of practical, experimental work and theories are formulated after discoveries. During his debate with Avicenna on natural philosophy, Al-Biruni made the first real distinction between a scientist and a philosopher, referring to Avicenna as a philosopher and considering himself to be a mathematical scientist. Al-Biruni's scientific method was similar to the modern scientific method in many ways 
particularly his emphasis on repeated experimentation. Baruni was concerned with how to conceptualize and prevent both systematic errors and random errors, such as errors caused by the use of small instruments and errors made by human observers. He argued that if instruments produce random errors because of their imperfections or idiosyncratic qualities, then multiple observations must be taken, analyzed qualitatively, and on this basis, arrive at a common-sense single value for the constant sort, whether an arithmetic mean or a reliable estimate.